what does Christmas mean to you? Christmas has always, always meant a lot to me. I've always enjoyed it. It's, um, it's just a special time where people seem kinder to each other. There, there's hope. There's, um, it's just people realize a peacefulness and a happiness, um, a joy. You know, kids the whole Christmas part with Santa and kids and then the nativity and it just it just encompasses so much and it means so many things to so many different people that that um, I enjoy just hearing about people's customs and, and yeah. being a part of it. So what was Christmas like for you as a child? It was always good you know I, I, I've always been fairly spoiled I will admit it <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I always did always had a nice Christmas and I remember trying to get up early and sneak out and peek and see what Santa brought and then sneak back to bed and pretend that I didn't yeah. see <laughs> and act surprised in the morning <laughs> so acting from a young age I guess so yeah it was always really nice and, and involved a lot of family and a lot of traditions and going to grandma's house New Year's Eve and, and that type of thing just a, a very simple basic Christmas nothing extravagant it was nice so what's your favorite Christmas gift, Ben? You know, I... I or is I, it the gift of Christmas? It, it, <laughs> it is. It's just, I, you know, I, I love the, the whole spirit of the thing. I, I'm not one... I mean, of course, I love gifts, and I love getting <laughs> things, and I always have my list. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very spoiled still that I get pretty much what is on my list, except for all the new cars and trips around yeah. the world and all that. But um, other than that, basics, uh, you know, I will still get that on my pony. Own. Still waiting for that pony. That's right. Um, but um, yeah, I I just I enjoy the whole season and, and all all that goes with it. I guess is you know that's what does it for me more than you know, opening the gifts, which is, you know, obviously a lot of fun too, but I just like the whole, whole, whole picture for it. What would you say to someone who says that um, Christmas has become too materialistic? Well, I think that they need to step back and take a look themselves <laughs> and, and make it worth something to them themselves. It is materialistic and, and that's part of it and it's always going to be part of it but you have to step back yourself and take a look at what it means to you and and start your traditions and, and enjoy your family and friends and do things that will m be meaningful to you mm -hmm. um there, there's no there's not, you're not going to beat the stores and and yeah. you know that by august there's going to be christmas displays up and you know you just kind of look past it and try to look at positive. I, I tend to be Pollyanna, so, you know, I look at the positive side of things anyway, so. Mm -hmm. So now, how long have you been here at Deacon Dave's? This is my 17th year. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 17 awesome. years. Then. How did yeah. you get into it? I had a friend, John Bliss was working on it. John just said, you know, you like working with crafts and being creative and you want to try this out. I had never even seen it before. I'd only lived in town about two years, and so I had never heard about it, didn't know what it was all about, but came in and, and just loved being able to, to go crazy in someone else's yard and make a mess and spend their money and, <laughs> and get creative and, and enjoy the whole, the whole process of it. Now, were you ever particularly religious, or are you just in this for the Christmas, you know? Um, well, I was raised I'm Catholic. I went to parochial school for eight years. Um, I'm one of those that doesn't go very often anymore, <laughs> but um, it's still, I, I do have a spirituality, and, um, you know, it's, all, it's always a part of you, I think, and, and it is it's still, Catholicism is still a part of me and always will be. Um, and you know, being able to tie everything together with all the different types of ways Christmas is celebrated, with the spirituality part of it, and, and why we have Christmas, um, I find you know intriguing in order to, to get messages across mm -hmm. to people and share the story. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what would you say to someone who's worried that by coming they'll get preached at? Because it's not. <laughs> preachy it's not it's preachy no it's not preachy um you know I, I haven't I haven't heard that probably the closest of anything I've heard is um a couple times we've had complaints that people didn't like the religious aspect of it mm -hmm. you know and it's like 
but it's, it's sorry, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a Catholic home. It's a private home. You, if it's you're offended by it, don't Go come. Do your own display. Yeah. Um, so, you know that part. You, I mean, you almost kind of have to try not to laugh in their face when they say that. Yeah. It's like just that don't come. Um, but it's not a preachy thing. It's it's. I mean, Christmas is Christmas. It's it's the birth of Christ. So um, we try to have that aspect of it in every part of the display. You know, every year there's some part in the display that will do that to remind people. But it's not a preachy thing, and, and we definitely encompass all faiths here. Um, our crew members are, are all faiths. Um, I had friends that were Jewish that were coming and working on it and just had a ball because, because of the spirit of it. Yeah. It's what draws people. Okay, so you think that everyone comes just, you know, because this is that encompassed like Christmas? A lot of it, yeah. Um, it, it's very interesting. A lot of people are very drawn and feel a very spiritual pull when they come here. They're very, very moved. Um, my aunt was here last night for the first time and cried at the nativity scene in the window and cried under the light. You know, it just, it, it touches people in so many different ways. And we do have a lot of people yeah. thank us for saying, yeah. you know, reminding people of, of what it's about, but also that we we know that Christmas means so much to everybody, you know, a whole lot of different feelings and, and emotions come out at Christmas and beliefs and everything else just around the holidays. So. But you generally get a positive feedback from yeah. people, right? Oh, yeah. You're very positive. Very few... Um, I mean, I can probably count on one hand in, in the 17 years the number of people who haven't been happy with something. You know, for the most part, everyone will see something in the display that they can enjoy and relate to. You know, it's just pretty lights, you know? We don't like yeah. looking at pretty lights. Yeah. <laughs> so, as far as the lights go, the relationship between you and the city, how is that? <laughs> it's actually very good. Mm -hmm. uh, we keep them in the loop all the way along on what we're doing, what our plans are. We work with the, um, the building department and the uh, traffic department, the mayor, the chief of police. Everyone's kept in the loop all the way along the way so that if any problems arise, we're able to stem them and take care of them right away mm -hmm. so that um, they, they don't get out of control. And they're awesome. They're very supportive of us. They realize what a benefit that it, this is to the community, both for the, the um, enjoyment of the guests and then the money that's brought in for charity. So they realize it's an important thing to keep here, and they are going. They support us to make sure that we can continue doing it. Mm -hmm. So they've been great. Do you get many donations for the charity here? We do. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, all the coin that people put in the wishing well and in the coin toss, and then we also have a box by the door. Uh, everything collected goes to the same charity, the Santa Secret Service. Mm -hmm and um, it keeps it going throughout the year. Its main focus is at Christmas time, as you imagine, Santa's Secret Service, but it's a non-denominational uh, uh, group that, that visits um, shelters, hospitals, nursing homes, and delivers gifts. So, uh, but they also they can step in throughout the year to help people in a crisis situation. So the funds help to go throughout the year to keep the, the project going, which has been going for 50 years. So mm -hmm. it's very dependent on the money we bring in here. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people think that the money we collect goes to the PG&E oh, bill or something oh, yeah. else, but it, it all goes to charity. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, are you involved with any other charity? Or I am. <laughs> I actually chair another nonprofit in town. Uh, Good News Bears, and we distribute stuffed animals to hospitals, shelters, police, anywhere around the Bay Area and actually around the world. If we send them an active duty military, we go to orphanages, and we um, we just hit a record year this year of distributing over 11,000 stuffed animals. So wow. we're just a volunteer group. and we, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're very proud of that. Um, it's too bad that there's so much need out there. But uh, we're very pleased that we're able to meet that need. Mm -hmm. And we tie it in a little bit to the display and that um, members of the group are here opening night to um, greet our guests coming through the display, but also to share information about the club. Um, we collect donations of stuffed animals that night and throughout the season. So they kind of have interlapped a little bit because it's my life <laughs> yeah. and they have to interlap you know they're, they're just going to so yeah 
Now, if somebody wanted to donate directly to either of these charities, how could they get in touch with them? Probably the best part, best way would be to go to casadelpomba.com, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a link on there to contact Casa del Poma Deacon Dave directly, and then my email is also on there, um, and I can direct for either either direction that it would go. Okay. So. Now, okay, as for the building processes, mm -hmm. what is that like? Because it takes a full year. <laughs> it takes a full year. We're, we're planning next year's already. We had a, we've announced the theme, and then and Deacon Dave and I were actually meeting on it the other night and getting a general layout of what we're going to do. So it does take a year um, to, to work it all together. We start props in the spring. If there are any special props need to be made, we start in the spring and summer. Um, for instance, if there's paper mache, so that we have enough time for it to dry and, and get nice and solid before we, you know, get into the cold, damp weather. Um, then we start, uh, some components will start earlier. We are just, I was talking to my husband today about a component we're going to have next year that will be on the roof. I won't say what, but it'll be on the <laughs> roof. And we can start that early and, and bring it over as a unit and, and put it up there and, and be done. And so not have to take valuable construction time as we're getting closer to it. Mm -hmm. We can take our time and work on it at, at our house, and bring it over and plop it up on the roof. So, so what's it like the day before opening? Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. I get to hate my name because <laughs> that's all I hear all day long. <laughs> it's Jeannie, Jeannie. Um, it's everyone's going crazy you, you know it, it's nerves get short I will admit and and people start you know you're tired and you're you're stressed and trying to get things finished but there's still a great spirit everyone knows um, the end result is what keeps you going you know we'll be out here till 10 o'clock at night and it's cold and we've actually been out here with hair dryers trying to dry paint because it won't dry so um, it gets a little stressful, but um, it, it's very good spirited, and and we know it's worth it in the end. And but we never finish. You know, there's yeah. there's always something. There's still things that I wish I had done this year that I never got a chance to finish. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of the way it is every year. You always see things as you go that you want to do. So <laughs> and it gets better every year because of it. So. Yeah, yeah, we learn a lot every year. <laughs> now, how many people work here? There's about 15 or so on the main construction and decorating crew, and then there's four on the light crew. Okay. And they, they work at night. Uh, we do interact, obviously, quite a bit, but the, the light crew is here after dark because it's a lot easier to see the lights yeah. going on, obviously, than trying to do it during the day. Um, but um, it's almost two different entities, and then towards the end is when we really come together to make sure that we have our lighting needs covered, we have... You know, they have what they need as far as power and things like that. So, now, how many hours do you think that you've put in? <laughs> I couldn't even this imagine. Year. This is the, I can't even imagine. Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, by the things I work on at home, um, painting signs, doing press releases, phone calls, coordinating volunteers, and then coming down and working. I, I couldn't even tell you. The last few weeks, it's probably. And about 20 hours a week the wow. last few weeks before we open yeah it's 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 consuming yeah, I <laughs> luckily I have very tolerant uh, co-workers who know know what I do and and step up and, and you have a full-time job that's a part-time job okay. well, it's, it's an as-needed job let's put that way yeah it's, it's part-time as needed um, if it's I'm with the film commission so if there are projects going on it gets really busy and then it'll be full time. Um, I can never plan or anticipate because they come up last minute. And I just deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> I sleep in January. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> How does everyone know what to do? Do you like hand out assignments or? Uh, kind of. We do. Uh, some people will have, as we get to know the crew, and a lot of these crew members have been around for. 10, 12 years. Um, John has been around longer than I have. So we know the talents, we know where they fit in. We will, uh, we know some people love to paint, that's what they like to do. We give them, you know, the, the layout and go for it, start painting. 
other people we know like to have a project to work on, so we'll give them an assignment as we're planning it in the planning stages and say, okay, this is what you need to make happen. And, you know, we work with you and whatever you need, but this is your project to bring to completion and make sure it's ready to go. So everyone has their talents and, and what they enjoy doing. You know, we had one gentleman love paper mache. He would spend hours just making a paper mache just right, you know. So we just find the, the niche for, for people and, and um, you got to keep them happy too, you know. If you're volunteering, you want to do something you're enjoying. You don't want to do something that you're miserable at, you know, a task. So. Yeah. Even though we all have miserable parts of it we have to do, we don't want to have somebody say, okay, this is what you're going to do and that's it. We want to have fun. What's your favorite part? You know, I like the whole process. I like, I like planning it and, and figuring out how to tell the whole story as you go through. Because we don't just come and throw things in the yard and say, this is Christmas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we come up with our theme and we like to, to tell a story and carry that theme through the whole yard. So I enjoy that part, I think, of getting the creativity, interacting with the other crew members and getting the ideas and melding them together, um, keeping them in line when they want to do chair lifts across the yard. Or, you know, we've had ideas for ski, ski jumps and things like that, you know, backyard tours, gondolas down the, the, the creek, you know. So working with everybody and coming up with a, a, a final finished project all the way through and, and then seeing it to completion when the lights come on that's always thrilling no matter how many times I see it maybe the takedown then that's the worst part yeah, yeah. takedown isn't isn't very fun it's, it's depressing but it's also I'm already thinking about the next year so it's you know I keep that in mind that as I'm doing teardown I'm also thinking what I'm going to do next year so that I can know what I have for props kind of tuck them away in my brain what I need to do as I'm packing things I can put things together so I mean it's still it's it's I guess I've been in it so long now it's not a I start here and I end here and then it's like a letdown it's it's a process all year long now so um you know it it's it's still fun to think ahead to, to what I'm going to be doing and, and start planning. And that's the Pollyanna and me again coming yeah. out. <laughs> i got to think of the positive side. I mean, it's not even really takedowns, just kind of like moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be up again in a couple They're of They're going to be months, up, so. right. It'll be totally different. You know, next year is going to be all completely different looks. Yeah. Um, and, you know, different. We, tr we, we strive to make it different. We don't want to, you know, in, in planning next year, we were already thinking, of where to put things and we thought, well we can't put that in this section because this has had it already so we want it really to make, make a different look to it mm -hmm. so you know the brain kind of keeps clanking along <laughs> all the time <laughs> what are you some of favorite what are some of your favorite themes from the past years <laughs> you know one of my favorites and it was probably one of the most difficult ones too uh, was the Christmas Carol because that's my favorite Christmas story um, that there's hope for everybody and it was really neat talking to the people going through because a lot of the, um, the parents especially wanted to share the story with their children and it was succinct kind of basic part of the story and so they were able to share that with them others had no clue what the Christmas Carol story was yeah. and maybe had heard you know a little tickler about it but they got to go through and see it and and appreciate the, the story for what it is so that was probably one of my my favorites but the most difficult because I didn't know how to do ghosts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and figuring out how to do ghosts was was a challenge um, I love the North Pole series. Um, we've done a couple different North Pole ones. It's always fun to be kind of whimsical and and, and loose and fun with things and, um, you know, do the reindeer and, and Mrs. Claus baking. And I always like those kind of aspects of it too, you know, so it's, it's not that I haven't there's some that I haven't liked. It's just some have been a lot more challenging in order to tell the story going through, and that gets a little frustrating. To how to how to fill this yard? Yeah. I know people that just filled, but you know sometimes it's hard to think of how you're going to 
bring this whole story together and make it interesting for people to come through so they're enjoying it all the way through. So. Speaking of ghosts, you're going to have a haunted house, right? <laughs> You know, we have a lot of people asking us, you know, why don't that you just do this? That would be amazing. <laughs> a lot of people say that. Why don't you have a haunted house? You have everything set up. But we're so involved in, in trying to get our last few weeks before we open that um, I don't even really do Halloween at home anymore because I, I'm just I'm such crunch time. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I love Halloween. But we do have a lot of people saying... Yeah, you've got everything. Just just turn it over and do it. And our crew members, too, they're getting into it. They're like, yeah, we just do a haunted house. And who knows? It may happen someday. Maybe one year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy crew members. <laughs> so um, what's your record of light this year? This and year. What's your future goal? We have no goal. It happens as it happens. Uh, we're at 325,350, I believe, this year. And we're getting more and more LED lights, which is helping because we are still getting close to maxing out our total power. We have 400 amps coming in, which is double your normal household, but we're still running about 380. Because as we're increasing uh, our lights, at least by going to the LEDs, we're, we're cutting the power draw, but we're increasing motor use and things every year. So we're still hovering right there. Um, until we keep getting more and more LEDs, we're not going to be able to go too much more. Because we're, unless we plug into the neighbors, and I don't think they'd be too wild about that. <laughs> They're tolerant enough. <laughs> but they enjoy it too. They right? do. They yeah. do. They're great. They bring us goodies during construction time. They, they participate in the opening ceremonies. They bring their family and friends through. They, um, I park in their driveway when I can't find a parking spot. They're, they're, they're wonderful. They're all really good. Mm-hmm. Now, um, people are coming and going behind us. How many people do you think come through the display each year? We get about 40,000 people come through. Each year? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. We have a counter. We install an electronic counter at the gate. So uh, it's fairly accurate. Obviously, it's not going to get little okay. little ones or ones on shoulders or things. Uh, but uh, it gets us fairly close. That We're somewhere around 40,000 every year that, that go through. Okay. Well, I've come in and out about six times. Okay. So. We'll, we'll take we'll take six on that. <laughs> okay. I don't want to cheat. Yeah. We don't want we don't want to make false numbers. <laughs> yeah. So um. But you count because you've enjoyed it every time you've come through. I hope I so. I have. So it counts. I have. It never gets old. There's we have people that come through new. every night. There's some people really? that that come through every single night. Neighbors and such. Mm-hmm. They just enjoy it and, and it's part of their their Christmas. And we've seen people come through starting, um, you know, as they come through with their, with their, as they're younger coming through with the family and now they're coming with their own spouses and their kids and they, and it's been neat seeing everyone. Um, this is such a tradition for so many people in the area and not just Livermore, but around the Bay Area. No. Speaking of spouses, the bridge. Yes. <laughs> How many proposals have there been? We've had uh, 50, 51, 52, somewhere in there. Yeah, we don't see them all. Um, if it's quiet night, we may not know what happens. Um, you know, we just maybe kind of spot it. And uh, but if it's a more crowded night, it's always fun because the whole line will erupt. And she said yes, and you know, and we come out and congratulate them and everything. And, and so it's really fun when it does happen. Um, but uh, we had one the other night that didn't didn't work, so I felt Aww. kind of bad. <laughs> That's unfortunate. It, it was. Yeah. It still counts as a proposal. Though. It still counts. <laughs> yeah, there was a proposal. Yeah. There was a denial <laughs> afterwards, but there was a proposal. <laughs> Well, at least most of them. Are most of them seem to work. Okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> most of them. The women, the the, the woman seems happy and, and pleased. Okay, so it's a shoe in for those guys who, who see I it. Got, oh, I tease oh, some of them sometimes that they'll say, you know, they'll, you'll see a couple go across the bridge and. And you'll see the girl notice, oh, look at the sign. It says there's been proposals here. Weird. <laughs> yeah. That's odd. So I'll say, you know, we haven't had one tonight. Go ahead. You know? <laughs> the daily proposal. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you could sum up this experience in one word, what do you think it would be? I don't know. Fun. It, it just, 
the whole the whole process and working on it and getting to know the people and, and seeing how it affects people. It's it's moving at times and, and seeing people they're just they feel the power just in the lights and and, and people that have had hope and, and um, kind of a renewed spirit to them. So it all of it comes together. I don't know, there isn't one word for it. It's, there's too many aspects to it. Okay. And then can you remember any pranks that have happened? I hear there are a lot. There's always pranks, yes. <laughs> uh, there's always um, things get put in the display hidden um there's there's things hidden in the display this year that <laughs> we like to see if people notice as they go through that it kind of uh, doesn't quite fit with what's going on in there um so there's a few things every year during construction there's always pranks i remember uh, one year um uh, deacon dave had just bought a whole bunch of new lights like 40,000 new lights had gotten a lot of them up was carting boxes around and my husband said oh Deacon these are all indoor lights and of course Deacon looked down and he looked at the box and say indoor outdoor but all he saw was the indoor part yeah. and freaked <laughs> no <laughs> so, <laughs> so I gave him a heart attack on that one. Um, so just things like that. We, you know, we we put Mastercard signs in the window because we always tease about charging and and uh, raising a little funds on the side and <laughs> things like that. So there's just it's constant. It's you know when you get a bunch of people together that are having fun and and get along great, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna have things happen. <laughs> of course. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, just to wrap it up, what's your fondest memory? My fondest memory? Probably just, um, well, probably one of my, my most heartwarming ones was a woman who had come through the display several times and finally left us a note on the door and said that she was coming through every night with her son. They were homeless, living in their car and this was their Christmas and it just meant so much to her to be able to do this for her son young I, I want to say five or six years old and she just was thanking us so it, it touched all of us so we left a note on the door for the next night and said please ring the doorbell and speak to a crew member so she did and we were able to help her out we had um presents for, for her and her son, um, found her, you know, got her some lodging. Eventually, through St. Michael's Church, she got employment. I mean, it, her life turned around wow. from that one thing of leaving a note on the door. So those kind of things, um, that's probably one of the more extreme ones, but there's a lot of um, just people that just, that just feel a, a spirit, a renewed spirit as they come through, and, and that that's what makes it worthwhile, is we're out here freezing and yeah. Low drying paint, you know. We just keep reminding ourselves this is gonna make a difference. It's gonna make a difference. <laughs> so yeah. Well thank you so much. Thank you. Coming. Thank you. And oh, have I'm a cool. happy I know. <laughs> and have a happy new year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. Can't wait to see next year's. Oh yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. <laughs>